Now we're going to take a look at some of the consequences of the mean value theorem. The first kind of consequence of the mean value theorem that we want to look at is in fact a consequence of the particular case of the theorem of Hall and involves the number of zeros of an equation. Namely, what we want to observe is that if you have a continuous function on a closed interval that is differentiable on the open interval, and there are two solutions to the equation f of x equals 0 in that interval, then the equation f prime equals 0 is going to also have at least one solution in that interval. It's easy to see because if x1 and x2 are two points in the interval a, b, say in the closed interval a, b, then um, there are two solutions of f of x equals 0. So we have f of x1 and f of x2 are equal and are equal to 0. Then the restriction of f to the interval x1, x2 is going to be continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval. That's just because uh, if the function f has these properties on the large interval a, b, it's going to be also true by restriction. So the theorem of Roll applies to f on the interval x1, x2 to the effect that the derivative takes a value 0 somewhere between x1 and x2. In particular, it takes a value 0 somewhere. So there is a solution to f prime equals 0. Now note that if instead we knew that uh, the equation f of x equals 0 has n solutions in the interval a, b, we could apply the same principle between each pair of consecutive solutions and we would find n minus 1 solutions to the equation f prime equals 0. So we obtain that in the case where we have n solutions to f equals 0 on, uh, in a certain interval where the function is continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval, then the equation f prime equals 0 has at least n minus 1 solutions in that interval. So let's see how these kind of observations can be applied. Let's say that we want to show that the equation 2x to the fifth plus 3x cubed plus 2x minus 5 equals 0 has a unique solution. There are two parts in this statement, that the equation has a solution and that this solution is unique. Let's start by calling the function 2x to the fifth plus 3x cubed plus 2x minus 5 f of x and then the equation has the form f of x equals 0. First we want to show that there is a solution to this equation and this is the kind of question we've looked at before when we discussed the intermediate value theorem. So you can go back to the module on the intermediate value theorem on continuity and you will find examples of this kind of exercises. So what do we do? We observe that the function takes both negative and positive values. For instance, if I plug x equals 0 in this function, I obtain negative 5, which is negative. And if I plug x equals 1, I get 2, which is positive. And the function f is polynomial, and therefore it is continuous on the real line. In particular, it is continuous on the closed interval 0, 1. So we can apply the intermediate value theorem to the function f on the interval 0, 1. And the uh, conclusion of the intermediate value theorem is that the function takes all the values between the values at the endpoint. So it's going to take all the values between negative 5 and 2 over the interval 0, 1. In particular, it will have to take the value 0. This is easy to see again. Uh, just to remind you how the intermediate value theorem works and why this is uh, <coughs> easy to, to be convinced. You see that we're looking at a function that takes a value negative 5 at 0 and 2 at 1, and we want to join these two points in a continuous fashion. Of course, the graph would have to cross the x-axis and therefore takes a value 0. So that takes care of existence. Now we want to show uniqueness. In other words, we want to show that it is not possible for f to take the value 0 twice. So let's assume that it's the case, that f of x equals 0 has two solutions. 
Then according to what we have discussed just before, we have the function f takes the value 0 in two different places and the function f is polynomial, so its restriction to any closed interval is continuous, its restriction to any open interval is differentiable. And therefore we can apply this corollary at the bottom of this page to the effect that f prime of x equals 0 would have then a solution as well, somewhere between the two solutions for f of x equals 0. But if you look at f prime of x for this particular function, if we differentiate 2x to the fifth, we get 10x to the fourth, 3x cubed gives us 9x squared, and then 2x minus 5 as der derivative 2, so we obtain 10x to the fourth plus, nine, plus 9x squared plus 2, and this is at least 2, because x squared is always positive and x to the fourth is always positive. Therefore, it's 2 plus 2 positive terms, it is at least 2. In particular, f prime does not take the value 0. So what we see here is that if f of x equals 0 at two solutions, then f prime would take the value 0, but it does not. Therefore, f of x equals 0 cannot have two solutions. And we conclude that we have a unique solution. Let's now consider a function that is differentiable on the real line that takes the value 10 at 1 and for which the derivative is always at least 2 on the open interval 1, 4. And we want to know how small can f of 4 be. The function is differentiable on the real line. That means it is continuous at every point and differentiable at every point. If we take its restriction to any closed interval, it's going to be continuous, and its restriction to any open interval is going to be differentiable. That means that we can apply the mean value CRM to the function f on the closed interval 1, 4, and the conclusion is that there is some value between 1 and 4 where the derivative of the function takes the value f of 4 minus f of 1 over 4 minus 1. We know that f of 1 is 10, so we obtain f of 4 minus 10 divided by 3, and we know that f prime has to be at least 2 for every value between 1 and 4, but c is between 1 and 4, so f prime of c should be at least 2. So that gives us that f of 4 minus 10 divided by 3 is at least 2. If we multiply both sides by 3 and add 10 to both sides, we find that f of 4 is at least 16. So this is the lower bound for f of 4, and this is in fact the best possible bound, in the sense that there is a function that is differentiable on the real line that satisfies f of 1 equal 10, f prime of x greater or equal to 2 for all x in the, in the interval 1, 4, and for which f of 4 is exactly 16. Indeed, it's easy to see that if you want a function that takes the value 16 at 4, the value 10 at 1, you can, for instance, take the uh, line going through these two points, it corresponds to a linear function, and its derivative is the slope of the line, which is 2 for every x. And we want to find, if possible, a function that is differentiable on the real line, takes a value negative 1 at 0, the value 4 at 2, and has a derivative that is never greater than 2. Because the function is differentiable on the real line, as we have said before, its restriction to a closed interval is going to be continuous, its restriction to an open interval is going to be differentiable. So the mean value theorem applies to f on any interval we restrict it to, in particular on the interval 0, 2. The conclusion is that there is a certain value between 0 and 2, where the derivative takes a value f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2 minus 0, but f of 2 minus f of 0 is 5, and therefore the derivative would take the value 5 half, which is 2.5 and is therefore greater than 2. In other words, we, ca we cannot have a differentiable function that goes through these two points and keeps a derivative less than or equal to 2, and there is no such function 
as the one that is requested in this exercise. If you have a function from the real line to the real line, it might happen that a certain value is sent by f to the same value. In other words, f of a is equal to a. Such a value is called the fixed point for the function. And here we are asked to find, if possible, a differentiable function f with more than one fixed point, such that the derivative never takes a value 1. Here it is implicit when I say differentiable function, that it is differentiable on the real line. So, if a function that is differentiable on the real line at two fixed points a and b, that is we have f of a equal a and f of b equal b, and the function is differentiable on the real line, that means its restriction to any closed interval is continuous, to any open interval is differentiable. So we can apply the mean value theorem to that function on the interval a, b, and because we have two different fixed points, that's a non-trivial interval, we are assuming here that uh, b is greater than a, which of course we, we can do. And the conclusion of the mean value theorem is that uh, there is a place where the derivative takes a value f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. But because a and b are fixed points, f of b is b and f of a is a. Therefore, the derivative would take the value 1. In other words, if the function has at least two fixed points and is differentiable on the real line, then its derivative has to take the value 1. In other words, there is no function that satisfies all the conditions required in this exercise. Now you should turn to your homework in my math lab before we continue to the second part of this module.